today I'll be talking about Kafka, um, unlocking the power of Pulsar for Kafka developers. I'm gonna mostly stay by the podium because most of the talk is gonna be a demo. Um, my name is Dustin Nest. I'm the technical trainer at Stream Native. I work on the developer course and the operators course that we offer, as well as our YouTube content, which we'll talk about at the end as well. Um, before we get into Kafka on Stream Native, which has been mentioned a few times today, uh, I wanted to talk about where we are with open source KOP. Stream Native has been heavily involved in the creation of uh, open source KOP over the past few years. Um, it does allow Kafka developers to take advantage of the benefits of Pulsar. Obviously, our enterprise grade multi tenancy, the unlimited data storage, built in geo wrap, and enhanced scalability and elasticity. For anyone who is aware of our protocol handlers, uh, supporting the Kafka protocol was achieved by embedding the protocol handler with inside of the Pulsar broker. Uh, this was the preferred method. I know other methods were tried before that, but this is currently the preferred method so that the protocol handler has all of the required uh, low-level information that it needs to support the Kafka protocol fully. However, we do realize that enterprise users often need a more complete feature set to migrate their existing Kafka applications for things like K-Streams, K-SQL, K-Tables with topic compaction, uh, schema registry, and I do believe transactions is supported in open source KOP, but not transactions when using topic compaction. Um, so what's next? So Stream Native has been working on what we're calling Kafka on Stream Native, or KSN. So we're releasing Kafka on Stream Native 3.1, so this will bring enterprise grade Kafka support with our full support SLA to Stream Native Pulsar clusters, uh, including KStreams, KSQL, KTables with topic compaction, schema registry with the Java client, Kerberos authentication, and transactions. And transaction support with topic compaction will be coming soon. Uh, for anyone ha who has used the Stream Native UI, um, you may have noticed in the lower left, we do have the Pulsar clients tab. Uh, that's where you can get a lot of uh, sample code to be able to quickly get connected to your cluster with, our, with the uh, Pulsar clients. Uh, we'll be adding in the Kafka clients tab as well, uh, which has a bunch of sample code to quickly connect to your cluster. I'm gonna be showing a lot of that code today in the demos. Uh, across the top, you can see that we have uh, tabs for producers, consumers, quickly connecting to the schema registry, the Kafka schema registry, that is. Uh, connecting with KStreams and also how to use KSQL against the Stream Native hosted cluster. The first demo is actually not specific to Kafka on Stream Native necessarily. It's a demo of how well, in general, uh, Kafka producers, Pulsar producers, Kafka consumers, and Pulsar consumers all work well together. I don't think everyone is necessarily aware that when you migrate a Kafka application that's producing over to a topic, and maybe consuming with Kafka from that same topic, you are allowed to start mixing and matching who your producers and consumers are. And you're also able to georep that data. I'm not gonna be doing georep today, but you can georep data that may have been produced with Kafka on one cluster to another cluster that's not even Kafka enabled, and then use those messages with Pulsar, uh, the Pulsar client, that is. So those messages would still be completely compatible. Uh, here is IntelliJ. Um, it's probably too small, so let me see. Nope. There we go. So this is the same code that, can you guys see that one okay now? It's big enough. This is the same code that you can pull from our UI directly. This is a sample producer producing using the Kafka protocol. Um, so you're going to see all these props that put, you're putting all of those into your Kafka, um, or preparing your Kafka producer, so here's your Kafka producer. The only thing that's really important here is the server URL that you're inputting here is going to be uh, the server URL to the Stream Native hosted cluster. So this is a Stream Native cluster that we spin up for you. Uh, and then your OAuth client. So you're going to be connecting to the server using OAuth. Uh, other than that, everything else is purely regular Kafka code. 
Earlier today, I know in one of the demos, uh, it was either Mateo or CJ had produced some messages at scale. He was producing them very quickly. We're not going to do that right now. We're not going to stress test, although we're going to talk about stress testing at the end of the talk. Um, so I'm just going to start producing some messages to this cluster using the Kafka protocol, and it's just going to cycle through up to 1,000 messages. Now, I have another uh, application here. This is just the Kafka consumer. Uh, super easy. This code can be pulled from the UI. Basically, the purpose of the code in the UI is not to teach you Kafka. If you're looking at this, you're already aware of what Kafka can do. It's to show you how you can switch over your application to connect to our server. So really, this top part using OAuth and how you set the server URL and things like that uh, and the, the OAuth2 token. I'm going to go ahead and start up the consumer so you can see the Kafka consumer pulling from the same topic. And then, as I alluded to, this is going to take a second to start up. But as I alluded to, you can completely mix and match. So one of the use, one of the use cases is a Kafka user might want to switch over to Pulsar to get the benefits of Pulsar. But then new applications that you create might want to consume those messages. And we would probably suggest that you create those using a native Pulsar Java client or one of the other clients. So I'm going to start up here, uh, Pulsar. Uh, consumer, so I'll just show, we'll go to the consumer first. Um, we'll show that we can consume those exact same messages here in the far right using Pulsar. So there it consumed all of the Kafka messages. So Kafka produced Pulsar consume. Let me start up that Kafka producer again. So we've got something running here. And we're going to get all four going at the same time. So might as well get the cough or the pulsar producer here going at the same time we're going to get these in the right order so it makes sense thanks intellij for making it complicated but what we've got here in that first column is the kafka produced the second column is the pulsar produced the third column is the kafka consumed and it gets all messages and then that fourth column is the pulsar consumed but it gets all messages regardless of who can uh, produce to them and then, as I said, any of these messages, you can move over to another um, cl uh, Pulsar cluster. And that Pulsar cluster doesn't necessarily have to have the Kafka protocol enabled. It can still consume any of these messages. Let me go ahead and stop all of these. I've got two more demos. Next is the schema registry. So we have schema registry built inside of your Pulsar cluster. So when you turn on the Kafka protocol, we're going to turn on uh, schema registry for you. That's the Kafka schema registry. We have that sample code in the UI. Let me just show you what that looks like. And we'll produce some messages with the Kafka, or using the Kafka schema registry. Where did IntelliJ go for me? There it is. So at this point, I've added another URL. It's the exact same URL as your server URL except it has forward slash Kafka at the end. That's the Kafka endpoint for the schema. And then here, uh, the serializer is the Kafka Avro serializer. Uh, and that requires then these extra items here. We're going to connect to that using OAuth. So we connect to both the server and to the schema registry using, using OAuth. Uh, here, we're just going to use a generic record. Um, but let me close some of these windows, and then we'll show you the So I just produce one message there, real simple. And then we'll just consume as well. And it uses the schema registry. Oop, just showed up in the same window. A few might come through depending on, yeah, because I've got some in there from before. So that's showing you the use of the schema registry and how we have built in the Kafka schema registry into Stream Native Cloud. The schema registry is not yet integrated with the Pulsar schema. Uh, that's to be done in the future, to have one unif unified schema registry for both the Kafka and the Pulsar schema. Uh, but that endpoint, that forward slash Kafka endpoint, is totally accessible by using uh, the Kafka curl commands to hit that endpoint. So it's possible to check your subjects, the version of the schema for each subject. And then when you do IDs forward slash one, you get your schema back. 
uh, and you can manage the schema registry di directly yourself in ways that you may have already done uh, previously with Kafka. And then the final demo I want to give is uh, with case streams. So in this demo, uh, we're going to produce some string messages into a Pulsar topic that is a uh, string schema. We're going to use the most common uh, probably case stream application, the word count application. We're going to read all the strings, count the number of each word. We're going to materialize that data into a topic um, so that if your application restarts, it has a history of the number of counts. And if more strings come in while the application is down, it will be able to pick up where it left off and continue counting. Case stream applications often go through a series of topics. So we're going to output the case stream into an output topic, and then we're going to read it into the next one. So it shows you that you can use this to string together your case streams. So I'm actually going to start them out of order. I'm going to start the case stream, the main word count application first. Actually, let me bring up the code here. Um, you can get this code anywhere on the internet, but we pretty much also, we have it in the UI as well, um, where you do the group by count, we materialize the data uh, into a topic, uh, and then I run a for each loop here to output the sums as well uh, to the UI, or to the terminal here. So let me start up that application first. As I'd mentioned, I'm also, in addition to printing it out to the screen, when the number changes, I'm also going to write it to a new topic. So I'm going to write it into this output topic. And then I'm going to read it in with another case stream application, where you could then do further data. But in fact, all I do in this next case stream application is I just print it to screen again, just to show you that you can string these together. So let me start up that application as well. So they should both be running. The only thing I need to do still is to write some data to my very first input topic that starts the whole chain of events going off. Um, and that's my case stream input. I'm just going to write 10 messages that say hello from Kafka with a number. So each time I run this application, the word hello shows up in 10 messages. So it should increment the number of counts of hello by 10, but the number is each by one because each message only has one. It usually goes through pretty quick, so we'll see what happens, where it writes quickly here. The stream application sees it very quickly. It then increases the counts pretty quickly. It writes it to another topic. And then the third pane on the right is the next case stream application picking those up right away, right after the, the first case stream application wrote it. So this is where you can start to uh, write your case stream applications in series. Uh, let me try it again. You can see the numbers aren't 1 and 10 because I've been running this. Um, so that one shows up. Then it shows up. It does the count, and then it sends it over to the third, the third screen, or the second case stream application. All, of this, uh, all these examples are in our UI as well. Uh, we've, the engineering team is, has been doing stress testing on 3.1. They've been doing it with three brokers, three bookies, and zookeepers. And they've been testing three different formats, or three different types of messages. One is your standard Pulsar protocol. We have the KSN Kafka message format and the KSN Pulsar message format. I haven't mentioned this yet. Everything I've been doing is in what we call the Pulsar message format, I guess. Uh, it, it takes in that Kafka message format and formats it in a way so that it is able to be read by anyone. If you are purely going to be using those messages in Kafka mode so that those messages will be read, uh, written and read by Kafka only, you can switch over to Kafka mode. It takes off a little bit of overhead that requires a small reformatting change in the message. So it's compatible with Pulsar. Um, but we have that ability. But we're getting um, here close to 500 megabytes per second in this particular uh, test. What we want to emphasize here is that um, we are, are encouraging users to reach out to Stream Native and our sales team uh, because we've been I just lose there it's back. Uh, because we've been doing the stress testing, we're ready for POC testing with customers uh, for Stream Native three uh, Kafka on Stream Native three point one. It's currently available on our hosted and BYOC clusters that are running Pulsar three. Uh, 3.1 and will eventually be rolled out to private cloud. 
Uh, the plan is for case stream, case SQL, and topic compaction um, is going to be exclusively available on Stream Native Cloud. If you want more information about it, we do have a blog post. Um, it's on our website. It's called Kafka on Stream Native 3.1, ushering in a new streaming era for Kafka users. And all of the video or all of the demos I did today are also available on YouTube um, on a new playlist called Kafka on Stream Native. Uh, this is actually what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, is I create YouTube content. Um, so I want to advertise those as well, because this is what I do. Um, but you can look at all of the major features. There's demos of basically everything step-by-step, -step, just like I had done today, to show you um, what all the different features do. And with that, are there any questions? 